Well, hello there again, everybody. Boyd here with you, and we're glad to have you with us again on the channel. I've been working on this little side project here. Uh, we finished building our dual truck a couple of weeks ago, and after I finished up that model, a couple guys asked if we were going to build the uh, car that we saw in the movie to go with it that the uh, Dennis Weaver character drove in the film, the little 71 Plymouth Valiant four-door sedan. And uh, at first when I thought about the idea, I didn't really uh, think we are going to be able to pull anything off because there wasn't a uh, existing kit of the model that's ever been made as far as I could tell. I did some looking around and stuff and couldn't find anything. Uh, really any, it's pretty hard to find any kind of four-door model car kits. But uh, I looked around a little bit more on the internet and I found a nice little thread uh, by a couple of uh, great modelers out there who shared their, uh, uh, their work and uh, they were uh, SS Impala 427 and uh, Mike the Mechanic and uh, they were talking about how you can do a kit bash using the two kits that you see here in the picture, this 68 Dodge Dart and the 71 Duster 340. They're both uh, 125th scale and uh, made by two different companies, but nonetheless, the parts uh, actually wind up mating up pretty good. What we, wind up, what we had to do there is we had to use the, uh, the front end, that's everything from the windshield forward of the 71 Duster to get the front end of the Valiant, and then the back half of the car had to be the uh, 68 Dodge Dart. Now, you're probably wondering how the heck do you get a four-door sedan out of a two-door hardtop uh, that we have with the Dart body? Well, when we looked at the side profile of this, and as those guys pointed out on their thread, there's just enough plastic there to uh, be able to file and sand away a little bit of the uh, edges around here on the original top and uh, reshape this sail panel here at the rear and simulate the look of a four-door sedan or four-door hardtop if they made such a thing. I'm not sure, but I think they were all sedans. But uh, So then after we had that opened up, uh, we had to reshape the back window just a little bit and we had to add that center post, which I just added with a little bit of... Um, uh, made that with some sheet styrene same thing with the small little uh, secondary posts there on the uh, on the door window and uh, once we got all that put in it came out pretty good uh, here at the rear um, the back window of the dart originally kind of you know stretched down a lot farther and it had sort of a curve to it so I had to uh, you know shape that more square and then I had to uh, uh, put a little bit of styrene filler panel in there and just kind of blend that all in and make it so it's straight across and then we had our uh, our back glass uh, looking like it should on the uh, four-door sedan versus the uh, uh, Dart. And so the, all that worked out pretty good. We went from there and then we uh, took our 71 Duster 340 and we cut the front end off of that, cut the front end off of the Dart, and we mated the, uh, the whole front clip up here onto this, the hood and all, and it lined up really good. You can see the body line right there, matches and everything. So uh, that was uh, perfect and it was almost meant to be. The plastic that the... Uh, body was molded out of on the uh, duster was a little bit thicker than the uh, plastic on the uh, Revell kit for the dart so I had to sand just a little bit to make this you know kind of blend in but we worked that down pretty good up on the top it all looks really good and if you turn the car from the front here and look at it um, the front end looks just like a uh, Plymouth Valiant and we used the 71 duster grill the 71 duster front and rear bumpers they were exactly like they should be on the Valiant um, the only detail I'm missing here is that the Valiant's supposed to have a parking light here and here on both sides of the grill, and that detail wasn't included with the duster grill, but I've ordered an aftermarket resin grill that's on its way here that has that detail on there, so hopefully we can use that when it gets here. If not, I'll wind up making just a couple small ones out of little uh, pieces of plastic and uh, putting those on there. And while we're looking at the front end here, we'll look at the engine. Um, I'll pan up here just for you real quick and see that we've actually got three model kits to uh, involve here to, to uh, complete this project. Uh, we, met, we remember Dennis Weaver's character in the film saying that the car was underpowered and that he couldn't get away from the truck. Well, I guess they were insinuating that it had the Slant 6 engine in it. Uh, so uh, a good friend of ours, uh, Calvin Sweet, who watches our Model Shop Guy show, sent us that complete Dodge 330 kit, and it came with that really nice little um, Slant 6 engine and all the drivetrain that goes with it. And we can see here that um, it fits in there really nice. Everything lined up really good. And I'm really impressed for that being a Lindbergh kit. Lindbergh is not known for being, you know, overly detailed or all that. But uh, this little Slant 6 is a beautiful little uh, engine kit. I mean, all the little details are there, even the fuel pump, the oil pump, um, everything. I mean, so it's and it fit in there. Uh, even the uh, motor mounts that came with the little motor, uh, the engine, lined right up with the uh, motor mounts on the uh, K-frame on the bottom of the... Uh, of the uh, 
duster chassis. We wound up using the 71 duster chassis on the bottom of this um, to uh, make that work and it all fit in there like it was meant to be. And we've got all the little extra engine compartment details in there out of the duster kit, you know, like the water, washer bottle and the horn and the battery, the radiator core support, the radiator and all that. So that worked out great, almost like it was meant to be. Now on the bottom of the car here, um, we also use the uh, exhaust system from the 64 Dodge because it was set up with a single exhaust, uh, you know, for our slant six engine. And I was able to just kind of reshape this pipe here just a little bit, bending it here and there in the muffler and getting that all to fit in there. And it laid down great. If you see it from the side profile here, it's not um, hanging down or anything. So it looks really good up underneath of the car like it was meant to be. And we've got our single tailpipe coming out there at the rear. Um, everything on the chassis is from the 71 Duster. It all lined up really, really good. You can see um, I've still got to put my little, I've got to glue my little transmission cross member brace on there. I forgot to do that, but that'll be the last part I put on this model. But it all lined up really, really good. And um, even down here at the frame and everything where it uh, meets up with the, uh, the inner wheel wells, you know, uh, inside the engine compartment lined up perfect. So you couldn't ask for anything better than that. Um, I'll point out that the subframe here that uh, attaches to the uh, main floor pan that's a separate piece on the 71 duster kit. So when I first test fitted it on here, I noticed that the wheelbase was going to be too short. It was just barely a little bit too short where the wheels weren't going to line up with the wheel wells on our body. So I just extended it forward, just maybe about a 16th of an inch and glued it there. And then you can see we've got our nice, uh, the wheelbase matches up real good and everything here on the sides. Um, so it all came out really great. I'm really happy with it. Um, it's not perfect. You know, we, we had to, uh, kind of make some parts here and there. Uh, what I'll talk about here is uh, these hubcaps uh, were not available anywhere. That The Valiant in the movie had some kind of really low grade, you know, dog dish looking hubcaps. And um, they were kind of a point in the middle and then they kind of taper off and they had these fake, uh, you know, like eight or nine lug nut holes all around the edges of it. And I looked all over the place and couldn't find any hubcaps that were even close to that. But when I started looking at the Dart, I realized that the hubcaps that it came with were similar to what I wanted to have in the middle. They had that raised area in the middle, but these are like, you know, hubcaps to simulate mags and they had these slots in there. So I got the idea to take some putty and fill those in. And then I tried to hand sand those and get those in shape, but it just didn't work out very well. So not giving up on the idea, I, what I wound up doing is I took um, and refilled the putty back in there. And then I found an old metal axle and a, and a hub and a, a tire that that fit these um, uh, hubcaps and I put it all together and then I chucked it all up in my Dremel tool and I just spun it like a lathe and just held some sandpaper onto the cap as it was spinning and sanded down those, uh, you know, the putty that I had in there and basically uh, created the shape that I was looking for. And once I was all done with that, I um, just uh, primered them and then I uh, coated them with some um, all clad aluminum. And because they weren't really like bright chrome in the movie, they were sort of a polished aluminum look. so. Uh, I went with that and it turned out pretty good and pretty close to what I was looking for. Now here at the back, uh, the car had a, uh, you know, uh, sort of a brushed aluminum looking panel that went across the trunk like that. So I created that out of some sheet styrene, just, you know, cut out a piece, sanded it down and, and uh, painted that with some aluminum. And the taillights here, what I did is I used some, uh, I have some uh, bare metal foil and I basically cut out the shapes of those and then stuck that down on there. Then I took some Tamiya transparent red and I just dabbed it in there to simulate the taillights themselves. It's not perfect, but uh, I may go back later and I may, um, as I talked about a while ago, I was going to make some little wire frames. I have some really small wire, uh, solid core uh, copper wire that I can make the shapes of those frames and then, you know, glue them down. It's going to be kind of hard because they have to not only wrap around like this, but they have to sort of tilt as they go over the top here because of the slant of this fender. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it might be kind of difficult, but uh, when I have a little bit more time later on, I might uh, go back and, and work on that. But just for the general appearance of the car, I really think these look good anyway. They, you get back a foot or two and they have that reflection, like, you know, transparent red there and the, you know, the chrome trim around there. They, they definitely give the illusion, like uh, the shape of the taillight like the, that the car had on it. And you can see we've got our uh, license plates on there, the ones that are supposed to be on there. Those were extras from the set that uh, Jerry made for me for the dual truck itself. He actually made the uh, license plates for the car for me too. And that's kind of what inspired me to go ahead and do it. I thought, well, if I've got the plates, I should build the car too. But uh, 
So you can see from all angles here, guys, it doesn't look too bad at all. Like I said, definitely not perfect. Um, you know, it's got, uh, I had to reshape some of the trim and stuff here and there, and I did the best job I could painting on the trim and everything. Uh, trying to do it with bare metal foil would have been really hard to do because there weren't any, like, there, there aren't any solid lines or edges that you could follow along with your knife. You're going to be wobbling all over the place trying to cut it, and uh, I just did the best I could with that, and I'm pretty happy with it. And the car didn't have, like, really bright chrome on it anyway. It was more of a, uh, a brushed-down aluminum or stainless uh, kind of look to it. So overall, like I said, I'm really happy with it. And when I set it in there on the display uh, along with the truck, it looks really, really good, and I'm really happy I uh, um, decided to go ahead and do this. And thanks again to those guys out there that uh, put the thread out, and thank you for those that sent us some pictures for references. And uh, Calvin, thanks for sending us the uh, the complete model kit. We wound up, you know, putting that to really good use. Um, uh, before I go here at the end, there'll be a couple of uh, pictures of the. Uh, I'll put up a couple of pictures of the interior uh, work that I did. Um, and basically explain it real quick here. I used the uh, 68 Dart interior tub because it had the, the detail on the side panels uh, looked like I wanted it to, and the dashboard was exact to the Plymouth Valiant. Um, the interior tub for that car was set up as a four-speed, so it had a little hump in there where the four-speed shifter mounted uh, on the transmission tunnel. So I shaved that down and just filled it in with some styrene and putty before I put the carpet flocking over it. And then I had to create a front seat because the front seat on this vehicle was a bench seat. And it turns out that bench seats are really rare in the modeling world. There's not many models that are made with front bench seats anymore besides trucks and stuff like that, uh, pickup trucks and stuff. So uh, I wasn't going to use the 71 duster bucket. So I basically took uh, the rear bucket and I shaved away all the styrene because the rear seat, which is a bench looking seat, was molded into the rear. I had to shave all that excess plastic off. Then I had a basic shell to work with, so I just made a, a back for that seat out of sheet styrene and some sides and sanded it all down and blended it in. And then we painted it in the brown, two-tone brown colors that uh, we saw in the interior of the movie car and did the carpet flocking and, you know, the dash and all that. And um, it worked out really great. I scribed a couple of lines on the sides of the, uh, of the bucket to make it look like the door openings were there. And then uh, since those pictures were taken, I added some little... Uh, fake uh, door handles and stuff on the uh, on the interior to make it you know the interior of the rear doors have the handles to open the door and roll down the window so um, you can't see it in the kind of hard to see through the uh, with the glass and everything here and then one final thing all the glass on the car here I made from 015 uh, clear styrene sheet styrene um, the only glass that would fit out of the original model was the windshield and once I tried putting it in there I didn't like it it was too thick and like a lot of kit glass, it looked really blurry and everything. I didn't like it. So I wound up making all the glass out of styrene. I cut it out and then just um, glued it all in. And we made the side windows there, the back window. Had to have a little bit of a curve. I like that stuff because it curves and it'll follow shapes and everything. And it doesn't fight you really hard when you try to glue it down. So it all worked out really great, guys. So there's another one to go along with our little dual truck. And I think that's going to be kind of neat. And um, like I said, I'm glad I went ahead head with it now and it turned out pretty well so that's it for this one everybody um, I'll probably uh, uh, make a little video later on of uh, when we update you on the stuff we've been putting in the model room and show the car sitting with the truck or something like that I don't want to put too much uh, dual stuff up but uh, I've had a lot of fun with the whole project and we'll come back here in a little while with another video of a new project we're going to be working on I think we're going to work on the um, uh, I've got two kits I've been wanting to build for a little sci-fi for a while I've got the uh, Mobius Cylon Raider kit, and I've also got the uh, Mobius Large Scale Flying Sub Kit from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea with all the, the goodies that go with it, the photo etch, the decals. I've got a great little reactor uh, lighting kit for it to do the reactor effect and all that other stuff. So uh, we're going to be starting on one of those other kits here soon just for a, on, the, on the Trekworks channel itself. And then over on the model shop, guys, we've got a lot of other models we're building. And then you're going to see a big... Um, uh, build series here on the channel uh, for the uh, badass models uh, Battlestar Galactica, the reimagined Battlestar Galactica, the large scale ship uh, and we'll be doing that. We're going to be doing a lot of lighting and battle damage and everything. We're building that one for a client so uh, you guys will get to see that coming up here really soon. So we'll see you next time everybody. Again, hope you enjoyed it and thanks again everybody for helping us out with all the info and the extra parts and everything on this kit. Couldn't have done it without you. We'll see you next time everybody. Happy modeling guys.